I played games on 2012's budget graphics card just to see how bad it could possibly be. However, the GTX 660 kind of surprised me because its performance really isn't as bad as you might think. And in fact, it can kind of play some modern-ish games as well. With its 2GB of VRAM and drivers which are 4 years out of date, the GTX 660 is already fighting an uphill battle. But that doesn't mean this GPU is complete and utter e-waste as it will still play some games, but I wanted to see how a dumpster graphics card just plays some games. After all, modern GPUs are pretty expensive so let's see how some cheaper ones do. Anyways, to find out how well this GPU gets on, we've tested at both 720p and 1080p. Yeah, the lower resolution is 100% needed. Stick with me here. Anyways, I've paired it with a CPU, which most GTX 660s will never see, the Ryzen 9 7900X, which is supremely overkill for this graphics card, but it's a graphics card test and not a 2012 PC test, if you get what I mean. But we've used the latest NVIDIA game ready driver, which is like four years old. It'll be on the screen somewhere and obviously resourceable bar hasn't been enabled. And lastly, this GPU has been left at its stock out of the box settings. We're going to throw this graphics card in the deep end with Cyberpunk 2077 and at 720p we have the complete lowest settings. We're just about getting 31 FPS on average. The 1% low is looking okay, it's not particularly great. This is probably worse than an Xbox One level sort of experience which is not brilliant. And this continues at 1080p where the game is completely unplayable at just 19 FPS on average with a 1% low of 14. So it's not going to cut you at this resolution, but who would have thought it's a GTX 660 in Cyberpunk. And then there's Red Dead Redemption 2 where we've only tested 720p because the 660 doesn't have enough VRAM for full HD it won't even let us play it. But even then, performance on the lowest preset at 720p isn't great either, with 25 FPS on average, with a 1% low of 20, which is not very playable if you ask me, so yeah, it's just a no-go in this game. You can make a case for Rainbow Six Siege X at both resolutions, however, as we get a very playable frame rate across the pair. Dare I say, at 720p, you've got a competitive frame rate at 122, but it's not really stable because that 1% low isn't really looking that great. There weren't any frame drops per se, like stutters. It's just in some scenarios, the graphics card would just like start to chug. And whether this is down to VRAM or just the age of this graphics card, I'm not too sure. However, one thing I'm sure about is the performance is inconsistent. This also continues at 1080p, where we see the same sort of behavior, just at a lower base frame rate. But hey, when I got into PC gaming, I was playing at frame rates much worse than this, so yeah, well, it is playable for some people, I suppose. The legacy version of GTA 5 on the high preset runs great at both resolutions. At 720p, you're enjoying more than 100 FPS, which is not really something I thought I'd be saying for GTA. However, this GPU predates the original launch by about a year, so performance is going to be pretty decent. Switching up to 1080p sees the average frame rate drop below 60 FPS, but I don't think this is that much of a problem because you could just do some settings tweaking and get above that threshold anyway, so it's not a make or break sort of deal. Skyrim Special Edition on the medium preset was kind of a weird one because at 720p performance was absolutely fantastic. 60 FPS for the average train rate which is an engine lock and the 1% low is only following that by just one frame per second so it was running very smooth but when we go up to full HD this is where the problems start to set in. The average train rate was great at 54 the same as GTA but the 1% low is at 30. The game felt smooth enough to play, but it was just getting sort of micro stutters every sort of 500 milliseconds, but it didn't make it feel unplayable. It was just sort of a weird frame pacing bug. There's no frame pacing bugs in Counter-Strike 2 on the low preset as the 660 got on perfectly fine at both resolutions. 720p, you're good enough for 140 plus FPS, which is great. And the 1% low is looking it's looking all right by Counter-Strike standards. And when we go up to 1080p, we see a relatively solid frame rate at 88 FPS, and the 1% low is looking a lot sharper here, or smoother, I guess is the better word. Anyways, both resolutions, the 660 can still get on pretty fine. 
And now we have Halo Reach on the Master Chief Collection. We've set it to the original preset here, but at both 720p and 1080p, yet again, we're getting fantastic performance. At the lower resolution, we're getting around 114 FPS on average, which is really not that bad. And the 1% low at just under 90 means the frame time is quite smooth there. And then when we go up to 1080p, the average frame rate does drop down to 85, but you're getting a lot more fidelity. So I'd say that's a worthy trade off right there especially as the frame time is still holding up. So you know that VRAM's not really much of a problem here. Well, I should hope so. This game was made for the Xbox 360 in like 2010. I don't test Minecraft very often, but when I do, I install the Sodium mod and I recommend everyone else to do it. I even install it on my 5070 Ti system because you get absolute bucket loads of performance and you even do it on this graphics card. 400 plus at 720p is fine. I will take that. And the 1% lows are also looking very smooth here especially by Minecraft standards. And then 1080p, we're still getting more than 300 with a 1% low of 255. So even if you wanted to play Minecraft on the newest version, the 660 can still do it and do it quite well. In fact, your CPU matters quite a bit more. The performance API in Fortnite is an absolute godsend for older graphics cards like this, as we can still get very competitive frame rates across both resolutions we've tested. 300 plus at 720p is very nice i think we'll take that today and the one percent low is around 33 percent less which is still quite good and then when we go to 1080p we miss out on 200 fps by just one frame per second so yeah that's quite good indeed and then we're getting around 141 for the one percent low so there's absolutely zero problems in fortnite and they still support the directx 11 api for performance so that's what i definitely recommend on a kepler gpu like this so I think given our findings, dropping down to 720p in most of these games is certainly the smarter idea. We've got a lot more performance at this resolution and also that two gigabytes of VRAM became a bit more usable here as there was like less stuff to put into the frame buffer. However, that doesn't matter if the game's relatively new. Cyberpunk is the newest game that we can play on like a dumpster GPU like this. And even then at 720p, you're getting around 30 FPS on average with everything set to the absolute lowest. And you can't even enable FSR as this doesn't support DX12 at a feature level, which was a big problem with Kepler graphics cars of made that known throughout the past. But I think given that it's a budget GPU from 13 years ago, the performance it was getting at 720p really wasn't that bad. It's doing a lot more than what anyone could possibly ask of it. Which, uh, yeah, is certainly the trend at 1080p in some of these games. Like, yeah, it was rough if it could run them because Red Dead Redemption 2 won't even start at 1080p and this is something that will just happen on any 2GB graphics card as it's just not enough VRAM. But even then, if it does start them, it doesn't mean it's going to run them particularly well because when we look at Cyberpunk, it got around 19 FPS on average, which really isn't that great. And no one can say that's playable because it just simply isn't. However though, if you stick to older games, like, well, I say Minecraft, it is kind of old, but it still keeps getting updated. The legacy version of GTA 5 and Halo Master Chief Collection, the 660 can still play these games at 1080p with not many issues at all. I know GTA got below 60 FPS, but yeah, settings tweaking, it's possible. All in all, it's obviously not a fantastic gaming experience, especially by the standards we set in 2025. But is it better performance than what we were expecting? Probably it's not really that bad in some of these games. Yeah, like Red Dead Redemption 2 had all the VRAM problems, so we had to stick to 720p, and even then, performance wasn't great. But we can look at games like Counter-Strike, Minecraft, Skyrim even, and GTA 5. Man, the, the performance was fine here. The GTX 660 got on flawlessly, I'd like to say, especially at the lower resolution. However, most of these games are extremely lightweight, even on a GPU like this. But you've got to take a look at the bigger picture. For a dumpster, bottom of the barrel graphics card like this 660, yeah, this is a huge win for this graphics card because some of my favorite games run quite well on this, like GTA 5 and even Minecraft on the latest version, mind you, albeit with the Sodium mod enabled, which I recommend everyone install anyways. So you can have a pretty fun gaming experience on a GPU like this, but if you want to play every single AAA game out there. I recommend taking a look at this GPU up here. It's got eight times the video memory. So yeah, it's a pretty beefy graphics card. So I'll catch you in the next one.